Hello, hello, hello. Back again, another live stream. I'm still on holiday and I'm still painting miniatures. And I'm going to be painting a troll today. A venom troll. Not your standard troll, a venom troll. So for those of you who are really interested in painting, make sure you have some paints, some miniatures, your brushes ready to go. If you're not painting, that's fine. You can always just chat with me, talk about Dungeons and Dragons, talk about roleplay games, ask me questions about anything you like. Not a problem. I think we're all good here. So um, if you're not painting with me today, that's fine. So get your food, your drink, make sure you're comfortable, be prepared, make sure you are ready to ask me lots and lots of questions. Keep me busy while I'm trying to get this thing done. Okay, if we're ready, let's rock in. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today we're going to paint a troll. We're going to paint a venom troll. No, we are not going to try and save the trolls, although I thought it was quite amusing. Anyway, no, we're going to paint a Venom Troll. It's uh, by Knowles' Marvelous Miniatures, and I have taken the time to actually make sure I am pretty much ready to go. I expect that this will probably take a significant amount of time, but that's all right. I have plenty of time because I'm on holiday, and I get to do pretty much whatever I like when I'm on holiday, and uh, I'm also going to run a live um, poll at the same time. I'm going to ask you a question. This question for today is, is your experience, what is your experience, should I say, with the troll in Dungeons and & Dragons? And yes, Nicola, I will tell you a little story about what I've done with trolls. Uh, I do have a story which I think you will find amusing. Um, and yeah, we can talk about other things as well, not a problem. So let's troll along, shall we? Let's put that pole up and get that going, and then it's into the painting, which is why you're here in the first place. Okay, so um, my plan for today is grey for my base, green for the troll. Um, I have three greys for the base. I have three greens for the troll, starting with a very dark colour, going to a lighter colour. I have two browns for uh, its little skirt. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, and I have three reds well should i say two reds for the mouth tongue area and sort of an orange color and uh then i have got something for the teeth which is like a, a sort of an off white so and there'll be some black in there as well so um yeah let's uh let's get get into it just a bit of a rundown of what happened with this hello fry minis hello eric i love that whiz kids made a mini shaped like me you really think so no it's not really shaped like you you just that's just your um that's just your self-esteem being torn to shreds. So for those of you who don't know Fry Minis, you may know about Fry Minis, Eric has a channel uh, and the focus is supposed to be miniatures. So um, go check him out. Uh, he's done one just recently on a very large, mini-headed queen dragon, as it happens. Thanks for showing up, Eric. So yeah, the miniature, when I was doing the, the cleanup, there are some very small, but not a lot of mold lines most of the mold lines that I could see that I could actually clean up were actually in pretty easy places to get to. The ones that the worst were definitely around the hand, uh, but the absolute worst were around the hair. I just couldn't do anything with them without taking the hair out. I don't really want to take all this hair off, so um, you know, it doesn't need to look like me. I'm already bald, it doesn't need to be bald as well. And then of course, you might notice a little bit around the feet as well. They were incredibly hard to sort of spot the light wasn't great, so I haven't taken off a lot of them. I'm kind of going to leave most of them, okay? So, um, Nicola or Gabby, welcome. M14 is here, hello. And we've got Todd. Yes. Supposed to be. That's right, Eric. Supposed to be on uh, on miniatures. Um, you've got a little bit of time before the next book comes out, so, you know, you've got time to get it in there. You've got time to get it in there. All right, okay, so let's get this on. Let's get started. I'm going to attack the mouth first. The reason being is I know that the paint will dry very slowly today. It's not quite as hot in here. So therefore it is going to be a slow dry process. And while I'm doing this, I thought, first of all, before I go into troll stories that, and what I've done with trolls, which is fine, um, I'm going to talk about the Venom Troll. And if you look at the, uh, the lore on the Venom Troll, in the, in the book that it actually exists in, which I think, I believe is Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, you will find bugger all. Uh, frankly, 
Um, did they even bother with the, the law behind this troll? There's, there's almost nothing. The stat block is bigger than the, uh, the law on this thing. So <clears throat> I'll talk about it, but it won't be for long, and then we're definitely going to have to move into something else. Just popping in, totally understand, man. I know you've got to go and do some work. Busy, 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 busy. Totally, totally fine, okay? You have a good day. Look after yourself. And remember, the channel's called Fry Minis. Minis, minis. I'm <laughs> sorry, man. I, I couldn't help myself. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so this is, sorry, I didn't show you the paint, did I? Cobalt Red. This is a Knowles' Marvelous Pigments color. I'm going straight into the mouth. Rather than using black, I'm just going to use that color instead. And uh, I am going to be doing the tongue more of a red color, but instead of using black on the inside, I'm going to use this red, this deep red color for the back of the, the throat and generally the mouth. And it should hopefully help put on the next layer of red that I want to use. That's the plan anyway. Uh, what's that, Gabby? Um, also, um, troll teeth make for good... Um, for good what? Crown teeth? Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. D Dix Bumpkins here. Hello, Dix, Dix Bumpkin. <laughs> that name really is a hard one to sort of get out. Uh, we got there. <laughs> right. So I put out way too much paint on that. Next, I'm going to deal with the grey on the bottom. I'm going to use this um, Dungeon Stone. You've probably heard about it before. I've used it before. It's not, it's not new. So we'll get that on. And then we'll start uh, getting the green on. Um, and as it happens, that the first green I'm using is called Troll Skin. Ah, yeah. um, you like to run Venom Trolls as a, a slimy transport. It keeps spitting out more foes onto the battlefield. Oh, look, I've used a Venom Troll before. I will tell you what happened. But um, it's not a pretty story for those of you who are going to come and share with me. Uh, yeah, you, 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 yeah, you, you're going to have to be prepared for a sad story. Uh, anyway, so going, going into the Venom Troll and a little bit about the lore, since there's only a little bit to talk about in the first place, since that's all they've put into the book. Um, the Venom Troll is the result of a troll mutating. Now, trolls are prone to mutating for a variety of different reasons, particularly when you injure them or you subject them to some sort of trauma that doesn't outright kill them. Which means, as a result of that, they train, they change their form. They're not quite the same as they were before. And this can result in all sorts of different things taking place. They can wind up with extra heads, extra arms. Uh, they can wind up with extra organs inside their body. Uh, who knows? They, they could even start having things growing on them that weren't growing there before. Vegetation, all that sort of stuff. They, they just, unless you subject them to the right sort of trauma, they just don't die. Instead, they mutate to continue surviving. That's the nature of, of trolls. So with this particular troll that mutates, if the troll suffers a massive dose of poison, it might mutate. And this is the result of the venom. This is how we get the venom troll. Because a troll, whatever, maybe it came across a giant scorpion uh, or something like that, or a... A wasp, giant wasp, anything that has some sort of huge amount of poison that it can inject into this creature, and it isn't successful in killing it, then of course it it transforms and mutates, because that's what trolls do. And the lingering venom or poison infuses into the blood and tissue, into quite a, a nasty way. It is the, the troll itself is really on the brink of death, frankly. They just don't seem to die. Either that or still on the brink of transformation. Their, their change is not finished. Just because they now have uh, they're a Venom Troll doesn't mean that their transformation has actually ended. There's, there's more going on. Um, they could get much worse. And frankly, once they've suffered that kind of injury uh, and that sort of um, exposure, they are probably going to get much worse. Uh, what do you got here, um, Gabby? I mean, um, what's to talk about? It's uh, it's a troll who survived a fight with a venomous organism. Yep, head and develop um, yeah, venom powers. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's part. Well, look, I think that there can be more to it, but um, you know, obviously, they don't hire anybody who who likes to create law or has um, a lot to do with law. 
and therefore it doesn't go in the book. Although, you know, stat blocks take up a lot of space nowadays for third edition. They're going to get bigger too. Ooh, you're going to have even less. Um, I still think that lore is an important aspect and I, uh, I know this because I've played Dungeons and Dragons 4E and I know what you could wind up with if they don't actually fix that problem. You could wind up with big stat blocks and not a lot of anything else and it's actually tr very difficult to build a story around just a stat block rather than something that actually has some information and story lore behind it. For Dungeon Masters, extremely difficult. I, that's what I certainly found, and I know a lot of people that I know have found the same thing. So, it's in the tissues, and unfortunately this poison is leaking from the pores of this uh, poor troll. Uh, as a result, um, it will coat the fangs and claws of the creature, which... It's kind of handy, actually. That's exactly where you want your um, your poison to be, right? So <laughs> that's not the issue. But it comes through the skin, the pores of the skin, eyes, ears, mouth, body. And it's not necessarily leaching out in a, a black gush or anything like that. No, that only really happens if it gets injured. No, but it will permeate the skin. So the skin of this thing is actually quite dangerous as well. And as a result of all of that, you don't want to fight this creature in close quarters. You don't want to be up close. Close combat with this thing is a really bad idea because wounds tend to spray out poison when you, you cause an injury to it. Slashing, not a good idea. Bludgeoning, probably better, but you can still break the skin. Hang on, let's just see if I can get this paint in here because we haven't started on the green yet and I want to. Sorry if it's out of frame, I just need to be able to see what I'm doing. Okay, I'm going to go back in frame again. So that's what's going on. You don't want to, and, and also Venom Trolls um, still have regeneration. Even though it has suffered this huge amount of uh, uh, poison infusion, it is still able to regenerate. So it's, it's still going to require certain things to take place. Like, um, you're going to have to stop its... Uh, its regeneration using some sort of fire or acid to disrupt the regeneration ability. Um, so that's another sort of kind of weird thing that's going on there. Uh, of course this creature is immune to poison, not just poison damage but the poison condition as it should be, like with everything. And and the poison that it exudes doesn't, doesn't just take um, hit points off in terms of poison damage. It actually imparts the poisoned condition without having to make an attack roll and a saving throw. There's just an attack roll and that, I think I think it's an attack roll, it's just one. It's just one dice roll, not two dice rolls, which means, of course, when you do two, two dice rolls, the end result is that the chances are that you, you'll, you'll save on, on it. You, you probably won't be affected by everything, right? This poison is so bad, there is no way of resisting it. That's how bad the poison coming out of this thing is, which I think is awesome. Um, that means that even if you have resistance to poison, you are still going to be affected, although you might not have quite the same effect. Um, but yes, I, uh, I like a advantage to saving throws. Oh, that's nice, provided you get one. <laughs> right? Provided you get one. If you don't get one, it won't mean anything. So that is the, the troll. And and like all of these um, uh, creatures, these trolls, that continue to mutate um, in their ravaged state that it's um, currently living in, um, they they hunger. They, they, the, the drive for eating stuff continues, uh, which means that anything's going to get eaten. Like, literally anything is going to get eaten. Like most trolls, they just eat everything, right? Okay, so I need a drink of water, and then we're moving on to green. And this is the troll skin I was talking about that I was going to use. I'm going to move it over to this side. And for that little pot for now. And we'll continue on our merry way. So that is the, the, the Venom Troll. And that's really all there is that I could find in the book in terms of lore. There's not a lot. It's pretty sparse. How are we doing in terms of our poll? Have we got a few votes in there so far? Okay, I have painted a troll. 
a miniature, cool. Um, I have run the troll as a DM, okay. Nobody's fought a troll so far, unless, of course, there's been a dungeon master who's fought a troll as a player. And I have no experience, 33%. So it's kind of split three ways. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Story time while I paint the troll. There was a time when I was particularly odd in the kinds of NPCs that I would create. And it does still happen to this very day, okay? But there was a day that I created a troll, and this particular troll was not a Venom troll, it was a standard troll, but it was an old troll. It had been around a long time. And I decided that it was going to be so old that it lost its teeth and its regeneration. It couldn't regenerate, lost its teeth. Um, the other trolls didn't really like it that much. And it also had um, uh, suffered quite a bit of a few injuries. So it was kind of hurt. And it had a walker, a walking frame. I know I gave, I gave a monster in an adventure a walking frame. That's right, I did. Uh, I also, because it had no teeth, it had to talk and speak because I used an accent, um, which I'm not going to try to duplicate right now because it'll just ruin my voice and I'm, I've got a, a bit of talking to do for a little while. And um, I named it Jub Jub as in a play on Jubba the Hut. And my players didn't kill this troll. They fell in love with this troll. Yeah, I know it happens. Um, you know, nobody nobody had like a um, an intimate relationship with this troll, but the they liked the troll so much they wanted it to join the party. That's how well I tricked my group into getting involved in the, with this um, this troll. The troll actually had nothing untoward going on. And, and they, they trusted the troll uh, implicitly to start off with. Then after a while, you could tell that they were starting to th think that maybe I'd played a Swifty, which I thought was perfect. There's nothing better than players thinking that you are trying to trick them when you haven't. That means it's like a double trick. Um, and I know people say, oh, you're tricking people's not that I'm good and you know, Dungeon Master's not supposed to do that. As I said, I, I see the Dungeon Master's job like a magician. You, you show one thing, but something else is going on. Um, you don't show them um, everything that's going on behind the screen if you can help it. Otherwise, it breaks the, the idea of the story, right? And we were playing um, in a, a troll warren. Uh, they were having to deal with the Troll King. Uh, they thought for a little while that um, Jub Jub was actually a the Troll King himself, but he wasn't actually the Troll King. He wasn't in charge, but they were convinced at one point that he was. It didn't help them because Jub Jub wasn't really uh, liked by any of the other Trolls. He's too weak and old now. Trolls don't really like weakness, you know. They don't have it. They're not sympathetic to to your plight in any way whatsoever. So I played that out, and um, yeah, I can tell you that my intention was that for them to actually like this character a lot, and I did a good enough job. It doesn't happen often, getting getting somebody to actually like a an NPC that you've created and not just kill it is extremely difficult. But if you have a troll walking out around the corner. Uh, with a walker and uh, and start talking to you in, in common, chances are you will be successful in striking up a conversation rather than it being skewered by a sword. And that is exactly what happened in my game. Uh, I probably would say that that is the best NPC that I've ever had that's been so unusual uh, that my players have gravitated to it completely and um, and fallen for it. Hook and sinker. Easy hook and sinker. And so, yes, feel free to steal that idea for those of you who are like liking the idea of including a infirmed um, retirement home troll with a walker. You go for it. If it will be useful to you, you're welcome to it. Okay, so we're doing all right in terms of painting here. 
Um, right now, uh, well, hi Joe, how's it going? Overboard DM is here. Overboard DM has a channel as well. Does miniatures, terrain reviews. How you doing, mate? Okay, so I am painting this green. I'm going to paint this section here uh, black, and then I'm going to use browns on the uh, on the on that section uh, very shortly. That'll hopefully give me time to dry up some of the other areas that I'm working on. I am using just a scummy brush. There's nothing particularly fancy going on right now. I've got plenty of time as far as I'm concerned, so we'll be all good. Um, now, I have used a Venom Troll in a game before. Uh, we were we were playing in a, a game where they were in a dungeon. They were actually in an undermountain. And uh, they had standard trolls in the uh, in the in the area in this pre-made adventure. I didn't really want to use standard trolls. Standard trolls just don't stand up, not to experienced players. St experienced players know fully well, even if they are um, good at not metagaming, they're just going to hit it with. Uh, um, can I make a knowledge check about this creature? Which is the first thing, of course, they do. And then once they've done that. They're just going to um, find somebody who's got a good enough modifier. They'll find out enough about it to be able to know that it, fire and acid will destroy it. So I included this monster th to throw them off. And uh, somebody got right up in its face and they had many, many attacks. I think they action surged and then they didn't just action surge though. They had, they were dual wielding as well. And so the number of attacks that were being unloaded and they were playing ab above level six. So they think that they had like, was it three, two, three, four attacks. And then the action surge, they had eight attacks. So just imagine eight wounds off this thing, all splattering everywhere. <laughs> they absolutely got covered in poison. And yes, they did go down. And yes, they did die. Um... But probably not for very long because they just got them raised up uh, from the dead later on um, as a result of a story quest that I included. So yes, these things are quite capable of taking down a paladin. <laughs> they they will make mincemeat of a paladin at the right level. Particularly if they insist on getting up close. And um, once everybody not realized what was going on, nobody wanted to go near it. They, they didn't matter. It didn't matter if they were just show and throwing a dart at it. They wanted to stay clear. I used more than one. <laughs> I used more than one of these trolls too, so it made it a little bit more difficult for them. All right, so, um, Bumpkin, what do you got here? With all the possible variations of a troll, have you homebrewed any special types to yourself? Good question, I have. Uh, I actually included quite a few. Uh, when they were trying to take over, now there's a blood um, sport pit, that Xanatha runs. Um, he's part of the Xanatha Guild, Crime Lord. And, and in this case, I decided the best way to really sort of mix things up was to have some trolls as part of the arena fight. And the characters were actually, uh, to, to get into this, into Xanatha's hideout, they had to enter this particular tournament fight. And a lot of people die in this tournament fight. Uh, and good for good reason. I included four mutated trolls to see if I could um, throw them off. I had one that had two heads. I had another one that could fly and had wings. Uh, probably because I've been eating something that could fly. I had another one that had three arms. And then I think another... What was the other one? Is that three? What was number four like? I'm trying to think. I think it had, what did it have? Three arms, da da da. I think another one had four arms and some sort of defect in its body. I can't remember exactly the, all the details. Uh, my players troused all four of them. <clears throat> I, I, gave them I gave them extra attacks and when it made a sense. I did all of that. Um, I gave them maximum hit points. I rolled a six-sided dice and added that to every um, damage attack, you know, every damage roll that they had uh, when they made an attack that scored a, a hit. Um, so I did a lot of different things, and then some of them could fly, and some of them, some of them um, were you know, like 
really quick because they had more than one head, so uh, they sort of would get ad advantage or a bonus to um, initiative for uh, just moving out of the way because you, you couldn't sort of catch them unawares. Um, so I think dexterity was sort of part of the part and parcel of that particular um, experiment. Yes, my group laughed at it and then proceeded to butcher the entire arena. Um, I think once they'd, they'd fought them and they thought, well, look, we're not going to stick around and wait for them to throw something else at us. Let's just take everybody out since that these things haven't been able to do it. We'll be fine. And so that's exactly what they did. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, I really, I must have, <laughs> did I fail? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't work out quite the way you're expecting. That's all. Um, Dungeon Master Ale, how's it going? Um, I use the mythical lore of trolls being petrified by sunlight. And it got uh, got them in an interesting roleplay. Yeah, fair enough. Trying to distract the trolls in long enough to have them petrify. Um, I don't really... I, I haven't done that because they usually don't experience... I don't put my trolls usually above ground. I have occasionally, but very rarely do I do that. <clears throat> okay, we've got here Boss Bully Boy. How's it going? I just finished painting the same figure two nights ago. Well, can you can you highlight and let us every, everybody know n what was the easy part of painting the miniature and what was the hardest part of painting the miniature? Because since we're all here in a live stream watching me trying to do it now, I'm sure people would be curious as to um, how much pain and anguish I'm about to go through. I suspect the face will be probably the hardest aspect, obviously. And... Um, yeah, I, I think that'll be about it. Maybe picking out the, the drips of, of poison. That might be tri quite difficult as well. <clears throat> Thank you, Joe, for the super chat. I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hey, Fred, just a little something for doing these live streams. You are welcome. It's not much, just uh, showing my appreciation. Thank you for your um, d and Q&A. You are welcome. Um, so... This will be the last miniature that I paint over my holidays before I go back to work and then it'll be back to normal programming. But in about four months, I will take more leave and I will punt, paint a whole bunch more miniatures um, since this is significantly less stressful for me. <clears throat> YouTube is so confused right now, um, Joe and everybody else. They are it's so confused. They just don't know what to do with the fact that suddenly... I'm putting out these live streams on painting miniatures. The views are low, uh, and yet um, the the income produced is actually not too bad. <laughs> it's not it's not great, but it's not too bad. And certainly, super chats do make a big difference. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to show this. Uh, I like doing the the pus filled bits, yellow and pinks with purple in the recesses. Interesting. I'm probably not going to go pink. I, I just, I have a thing about painting anything pink. I think that's more a product of my issues rather than a product of uh, the color pink itself. But I, I struggle to find myself seeing pink on anything. I don't, yeah, no, it's, it's just not my color, unfortunately. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Maybe not that funny. Um, so yeah, so uh, YouTube is very confused right now. Um, <laughs> the engine, the engine is really sort of um, doesn't know where to put all this. As I've said before, if you find these live streams disappear off my channel, it's not me. It'll be YouTube. YouTube sometimes decides to make decisions that I I don't agree with. Um, that's just how it works, um, unfortunately. But I will put them into playlists so you can find stuff. And um, I have constructed a playlist that says Painting 2022. And uh, that you'll find all of them there. And some of them, if they've got more than one video, will have uh, or one live stream, then they'll have uh, their own playlist as well. Okay, so we're, we're getting there in terms of the green. Coverage is going to be the biggest problem with this color. It always is. For some strange reason, it always comes out looking quite 
pale rather than standing out that much. <clears throat> a drink of water, pardon me. <clears throat> now, um, I'm going to do it, it's skirt. <laughs> okay, it's not a skirt. I know it's not a skirt. I'm calling it a skirt. So I'm using Vallejo Black. I used the Liberian from um, Blade as a, a reference. Ah, okay. I <clears throat> Now, the Liberian. I'm just trying to remember Blade, Liberian. I've missed, I've missed the reference. You're trying to reference something and I, I can't quite place what you're trying to say. Um, yeah, give me a little while. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll remember, remember something. I'm assuming you're talking about Blade the Vampire. You know, the Daywalker. Is that, that's the Blade we we're talking about? Or is there something else that I'm, I'm missing here? <clears throat> Maybe there's something else I'm missing here. Okay, so it's this black. I'm going to use this big brush to start off with, just for some of the bigger areas, and then I'll go back to the smaller brush. That's that area there, that area there. Then the outside, mostly whacking on the paint. I'm going to go over this with a brown color. Um, I'm probably not going to be hitting this with a lot of detail to start off with because there's, the green is going to take up more of my time than anything else. So I highly recommend people, if you are in a unsure what to do with your, um, your creatures, make changes to them. Absolutely. Now I see I put up a poll and I started talking about... Um, the play testing for Dungeons and Dragons Evolved. And I totally understand people who do not want to take part in it because that was my first in impression when they came out with Dungeons and Dragons Next. What I would like to say is that without your input, if you are able to give it, sometimes it's just not possible. Without your input, the game transforms into something else. Not necessarily the thing that you want it to transform into. Remember? It's only those people who are invested and interested in being part of that process that actually have a voice. Now, Wizards of the Coast doesn't necessarily listen to everything. Okay, but I think, given that they are at least providing an opportunity to do that, it would be smart to do so. At least, even if you can't play the game, possibly if you have time to look at what they are offering when they do offer it, and then make some comments you know uh, maybe they can't be highly informed comments but they can be some sort of um, comment <clears throat> now this troll is going to be a complete pain because the flaps of um, fat drift right over its little um, its little thing here so it's going to be I'm going to have to redo that line I think I've kind of overshot the, the mark this is why I put out that poll, and as soon as the playtesting starts, I will let everybody know about it. I will probably do a full-blown um, live stream talking about the whole thing. I think it deserves its own sort of uh, discussion, and one of the things, if you hadn't been aware, is I've always been trying to make Dungeons & Dragons sort of standard fear like it's it's what you find in the store hi camille how's it going yes you are here now too welcome back so one of the things with my channel and this is why there's a lot of rules videos where i, I got miniatures and dice and maps out and showed you how to, all the rules would work for dungeons and dragons 5e is i really wanted the game to be as popular and as common as monopoly now I know I've got friends and I know there are people who don't like that idea. They, they like the idea of a game being very much a nerd thing and restricting people who play the game. Um, that's really never been my, my pursuit. My pursuit has always been something else. That doesn't mean that I agree with everything that Wizards of the Coast does in terms of changing the way the game works 
or some of the law stuff that's changed or some of the wording and so forth. I'm not really interested in that aspect of it. Okay, that's not my, my goal. My goal ultimately is to get more play people playing a game which I think has more use to people than playing something like Monopoly. I'm sure we could do with more people who who learn how to make gobs and gobs of money, but actually there's plenty of that going on, on right now as it is. There are very few uh, games that teach people how to work together and how to operate as a team. And that is one of the things that I see Dungeons and Dragons doing. And a lot of role play games do this. It's not just Dungeons and Dragons. Many role play games have that, this element. It's not just about storytelling, it's about working together. And that's what I want to encourage. Um, and so anytime we do something that discourages people from doing that, I'm not really a fan of that at all. Okay, so now I'm gonna try I've got to try to get into the un, look underneath here, right up in there, that's actually quite a difficult spot to get to. So yes, um, you don't have to agree with my, my view of and goal for Dungeons and Dragons, um, but that has always been my goal from the very get go. And um, <clears throat> it's never going to change. It's always going to be that way. Now, okay, so I've done all right with that. Um, I'm just going to wait for that green to dry a little bit more. I'm probably going to have to hit it. Actually, I, maybe I can hit it now in the bigger areas. Because this paint will dry, it's not drying very fast though. Over the bigger areas that are sort of very, very thin, I can probably just put another coat and then I'll do the base again. And that will get, let's get the face a bit darker. This is just a scummy brush, there's nothing fancy. I'm not using a citadel brush, I'm not using a fine um, tip brush. Not using um, army painter brushes with this particular one. I was using a citadel brush before. That was a standard size one, but right now I'm just using a, a normal brush. Okay, so I actually I'm going to put a bit more of that on now, rather than wait. I'll just keep going. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to the beach today, uh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, because it's kind of overcast. It's not very nice outside. So it's time to, tr to clean my drain. Imagine your drain is blocked with all sorts of horrible things from the kitchen. That is my job after this, is to go and clean that out. It's blocked up and I need to clean it all out. And by gum it is going to be a horrible job. It really will be. <laughs> uh, if Do you feel sorry for me? Thanks. Uh, I know I'm going to feel sorry for myself at the end of this. I'm also going on to see the new Spider-Man movie. I am a fan. I love Spider-Man. Um, I don't like spiders, but I like Spider-Man. Uh, so I've heard the new Spider-Man movie is really, really good. So I'm eager to see this. I haven't been to the movies in a really long time too. So it'll be nice to do so before anything else can happen in 2022, which I'm sure it will. So I'm, I'm going to get my movie in before it's over. And I go out with my mum, because I haven't been out with my mum for ages. So, yeah, a, very, a family affair. Um, a family get-together, you might say. Um, hopefully I'll get my sister, my younger sister. I haven't seen my younger sister in a long time, too. It'd be nice to be able to um, hang out with her as well. Um, now, is that Kerry? Kerry Akeri? Kerry Akeri. Kerry. Man, you're going to have to help me with your name. I'm really struggling. I, 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 I don't know. It's like I'm blocked right now. K-U-R-A-I. Kerry. Kerry. I think that's right, but I could be wrong. I'm not even going to try the second part of your name because I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with the first part. Hey, which one do you prefer, playing um, or dungeon mastering? Battle maps or 3D terrain? Um, I don't really use a lot of 3D terrain because there just isn't time or space that's fine if I'm playing at home, but I don't play at home very often. I live a long way from everywhere. Um, I like playing and dungeon mastering. I like to do both. I don't really want to be tied to just one thing if I can help it. Because dungeon mastering is a lot of work. Um, and players, you, you kind of get to sit back and sort of relax a bit more and just enjoy the process. Um, I use battle maps. So I use theatre of the mind. 
I, I'm playing online, but I still use miniatures because I just point the... Look, my, my webcam is pointing at my desk. And because my webcam is pointing at my desk, I can widen the shot if I want to. So I just put down a battle map and um, everybody just can see what's going on. They tell me where they want me to put their, their miniature and I just shift it to there and, and we're all good. And we just keep playing just as if we were playing in person. It's still not the same, okay? Even though I'm in New Zealand and we probably haven't had quite the same problems as everybody else, it's not the same playing with miniatures online. But it does bring back part of that feeling that we've lost. And um, anything we can do to reproduce that feeling is good. I, I do get you know, lazy at times, or if a, a battle isn't very complicated, I just want to do theatre of the mind, get it done and over with. Okay, I don't want to get too carried away and have to lay out things, because that takes time. So I use a mixture of everything. I do have quite a bit of terrain that people have given me and made over the years, but it's not necessarily with me specifically now. Sometimes I've, it, it's sort of living at somebody else's place. Um, I may never see it again. Um, I'm not terribly concerned about that particular fact. For me, 3D, um, 3D terrain is, is not really the driving factor for me. I like miniatures, but I, I'm not so concerned about the terrain side of things. Um, I know that um, DM Scotty certainly is, uh, and I, when I talked to DM Scotty, uh, and he was he was explaining a lot of what he does, it is often built around terrain, but not always too. He likes to have focal points, focal things, but there doesn't necessarily have to be a, a terrain piece for everything. Something else that I remember DM Scotty um, saying. Oh, by the way, you will see DM Scotty in the Dungeon Master Roundtable, so I forgot about that. For those of you who aren't patrons, don't know yet. Patrons probably already know about this, um, but you will see them. <clears throat> As I can't decide which one to buy. Well, look, I would go battle mat rather than 3D terrain. 3D terrain is more expensive. A battle mat that you can write on is, is cheaper and more versatile. It's, it's portable. And then just use theatre of the mind for anything that's really simple and easy. <laughs> of course, Joe would say 3D terrain. Of course, you would say that. <laughs> uh, dear. All right, so um, I might go around the feet one more time. This we've still got time in the day. It's not over yet. Not over yet. What is this? This is stuck on here. What's going on? Let's get this bit of glob of paint off. There we go. And then um, bang that in there. Right. Cool. A bit more green. Um, bumpkin. Um, should clean the, the drain first. I'll give uh, give you some insight to the Venom Trolls colours. Cool, thank you very much. Um, you do that. I am... I am, uh, frankly, uh, afraid of that drain. I've had to do it quite a few times. Um, I suppose I could just pay somebody to do it, but I know how much it would cost. If I get a drain person to come out, they charge... An enormous amount of money. An enormous amount of money. Just to come out to my place, it will be $100 New Zealand. Just to, just to look at it. They don't even do anything. They're just going to come drive out here. That's it. Um, so, given that, even if they were local, they're still going to charge that. <laughs> and the local boys, unfrankly, are um, cowboys. I live in a rural area, and frankly, most of the tradesmen out here feel like they are cowboys. I don't like hiring them. I often prefer and wind up having to hire somebody from the city, which is ridiculous, but it does happen. A lot. <clears throat> Otherwise, you wind up with a, a shoddy job, and I'm not really in, into that. Um, what's this, Sajo? Uh, Fred um, has lost... Lost that love, fe loving feeling. That's right, I have. I've lost that loving feeling for terrain. Look, I used to, look, I, you know, I used to do tabletop wargaming. So that means I made my own terrain. Uh, we, we played with fake trees and made mountains and hills and um, all sorts of buildings. And that was, that was common, common practice when you're playing tabletop wargames. So it's not like I haven't done terrain. But it's just not it's just not my focus. And it's not practical when you're playing online. 
<clears throat> or even if you have to go to somebody else's place, which was actually more likely the, the biggest issue because, or I have to go to the city, because um, you've got to cart it around with you. It, it's, it's awful. <clears throat> Pardon me. I just need another drink of water. I'm a little bit um, hoarse. I'm going hoarse. <clears throat> I'm going to hit the base in a second. <clears throat> How can I solve this little lurgy that's getting into my throat? I'm going to try a, um, a throaty. Uh, what do you got here, Camille? Um, what can I do when there are friends wanting to join my D&D &D game, but we are already five people? I don't want to throw somebody out, but I don't want to get um, to get it out of control either. Just say you don't have enough space. <clears throat> I have friends right now, Camille, who want to join the game, and I'm um, said no. Five players in the group online and a dungeon master. That's six people. That's enough. <clears throat> the, the I think one of the things that people need to accept when they want to play a game is somebody ha else has to dungeon master. You say to those if you've got friends who want to join, you say, look, one of you's got a dungeon master and you guys join y your game. <coughs> Pardon me. Join join that game. Make your own game and play that. That's just how I see it. Uh, uh, this comes up a lot. Like people want to join onto uh, somebody who's already dungeon mastering and just play and just be a player. Sorry. <coughs> I do understand, I'm, I'm not saying you should kick people out of the group, because I've been through that, I know what it's like. But you don't have to say, yes, you can come and play. And if they're showing up, and you haven't invited them, well, there's a real big issue going on there. Um, it is part and parcel of the process, if you just got to find somebody who can run the game. And there's always later on, you know, once one campaign's finished, then maybe they can join in later on. People don't hang, you know, often I find people can't hang around for the game f forever. They get tied up into other things. I know right now with the pandemic, there's a, a much stronger interest in online play and playing Dungeons and Dragons because they've got nothing else to do. And they're getting sick and tired of playing um, video games. Um, even if they're playing the video games online, they're just not getting enough social interaction. They know they miss it. So um, I do understand where it, where they might be coming from. But yeah, they've just got to set up their own game. That's that's the deal. That's how it is. And ultimately, as an adult, you've got to make the final decision about how you're going to approach this. No matter what I say, ultimately, it's you who has to be an adult and make the decision. And communication is always the most important thing. I mean, really, is is it going to end a friendship by saying, look, there's too many people in the game already, I just don't have space, sorry. Is it really going to end a friendship? Will it really do that? Compared to, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to kick somebody out so one of my friends can be in there. That's much worse. That's much worse. Um, <clears throat> uh, uh, Curry, what do you got here? Thank you, Overboard and Frederick. You're welcome. I'll be sure to focus more on battle maps then. Yeah, um, I think probably the best battle map that I've seen is expensive, but um, D and D Well has um, AJ Pickett's uh, Glow in the Dark. Um, what is it? It's a cellulose. Uh, battle mat. You can use any kind of pen on it whatsoever, but they're really expensive. Um, if you want something that's still really good but cheaper, I would suggest the Pathfinder flip mats. I've done a review on them before. They're really, really good. You can use any pen. You don't need to worry about what sort of pen it is. It'll come off. Just don't leave the marker on there overnight uh, or uh, for a couple of weeks. That's always a bad thing for any mat. doesn't matter what it is. The longer you leave it on, the more likely the pen will stay. Um, so you don't have to worry quite so much about that. The Chessex battle map, I find, is it's a good map. It doesn't develop holes in it like the Pathfinder one does over time because it's made out of 
um, coated cardboard. But um, Chessex battle maps, you, you can balls things up pretty badly, which is why I made a whole series of videos on how to fix the problem when you wind up using the wrong pen and how to get it off. Uh, so yeah, just something to remember. Okay, so we've got the green pretty much on. I think that, oh no, I want to put a little bit more there. Just getting a, a, a thicker coat on this thing. So I've had to put probably about three layers, I'd say, close to two, three layers of the screen just to get it to that point. Uh, what else we got here? Um, Camille. One or two wouldn't um, be a problem, but um, I don't want it to, to go out of control. Yeah, so as I said, you just need to, you just need to be an adult and just say, look, I, I just don't have space. It's not practical, but maybe you could start your own game, you know? <clears throat> and if you start your own game, then some, maybe somebody else in my group will join your group, so you've got a bigger group. There's often you'll find if you can get somebody who was as willing to dungeon master, and it's not you, other people will jump into that game and take part, and so you don't wind up with a, a, a an incredibly small group. Okay, the next paint I'm using is orc skin, which is for the base. This is lighter than the dungeon stone that I was using before. <clears throat> Give it a good hard shake. I'm going to be using a, a scummy brush followed by my standard brush again. Uh, where am I putting this paint? It's going, I think it's going, oh, hang on, oh, look at that. Let's, let's get rid of this. Pull that off, cool, that's done that, cool, nice. So this is lighter. I'm probably not going to be putting this on um, perfectly. And if anything, if I miss patches, that's exactly what I want. The idea being to kind of brush it on uh, as if I was dry brushing, but not really dry brushing. So I've got it on, and then brush off onto the palette, and then just streak across. Streaking across like so to help pull out all the details. This is not necessarily my final highlight color, by the way. For those of you who are wondering, it isn't. It is just uh, an intermediate color, basically. You don't need to use three different colors for a base, by the way. Um, actually, I'll get rid of that, I don't need that. You can use significantly less. You can use one as your base color and then go straight to your highlight and that would be more than sufficient. Um, the last gray that I use for the base, I will do once the, the main details on my uh, troll have been completed. So the green really needs to be sorted out before I do anything major with the final sort of brush over on the base. Now I'm using this big brush, but I'm going to shift to a smaller brush very, very shortly. <clears throat> um, so you should, as I said, um, you should find some of the European YouTubers who do D&D and RPG start putting out their own Dungeon Master Roundtable. Um, I just noticed today they're getting themselves organized, which is great. Um, and I am going to cross my fingers that they are more successful than everybody else who's had a, had a go at doing this. So I, I wish them the very, very best with their endeavors. And I also hope that it means that they get to make more content that they were, than they were before. which I think a few of them were struggling to do, or getting depressed. One of the things you find is that some of these YouTubers, it's hard not to get depressed sometimes. So. Has anybody ever played a, um, a nautical-themed adventure? Or a pirate-themed adventure? Because that's what I'm currently playing in. And I have to say, it is... I mean, it, it's good... It has its um, good sides and its bad sides, but because you're on the sea and on islands away from everywhere else, 
it does restrict your ability to get access to things you would normally be able to buy. Like going to a shop to buy something as simple as ink and paper and parchment so you can scribe spells. Or um, if you wanted to do something like uh, uh, take the take the uh, scrolls or um, spells from an, an existing book and transpose them into your spell book or just buy any kind of equipment, you kind of preluded from being able to do anything like that with a, a nautical based campaign. There's, there's quite a bit of restriction in terms of what's going on, I've discovered. Because you're just so far away from everything. Now you could say, oh yeah, but well you can just go, go, you can just sail to the island with your ship. Well you can, but only until you've dealt with the current issue. And those can take a little while to deal with. So yes, it is, um, it is very much like being out on, out in the middle of nowhere with nothing else but yourself to deal with and hoping that your crew will uh, not mutiny on you. We just mutinied on a, um, a crew ourselves. Um, so I suppose it's possible it could happen to us as well. Kerry, um, another question. Uh, where do you get your miniatures from? As I would like a an inexpensive option if possible. Okay, so there... So I'm not buying inexpensive miniatures right now, but I can tell you where to find inexpensive miniatures. It also depends on what country you are in. So I need to know which part, what part of the world you're in, because I'm in New Zealand, and buying cheap miniatures in New Zealand is not the same as buying cheap miniatures in the United States or the US. Okay, much easier to do so in the US. Uh, the other thing is, it also depends on the types of miniatures. So what sort of themed miniatures do you want? Because I would often say the Dungeons and Dragons board games. And I've done a bunch of videos on how to buy cheap miniatures in bulk. A lot of people say eBay, but that doesn't really apply for every country. Because I know if I was in New Zealand and using eBay, they would cost more than going down to the hobby store. Um, and you can't just buy them off a different eBay in another country because nobody's going to ship them to you for the incredibly expensive cost that's involved in doing that. So it's just not an option. I'm perfectly aware of that. So it's important to know what part of the world you are in. Okay, you, I'm in the UK, mate. Okay, so that means everything related to Wizards of the Coast and anything related to uh, the likes of um, even I would say even the board games for Dungeons and Dragons are probably going to be way too expensive for you, because I believe I think the taxation rate over there and the the shipping cost of shipping it to your country, much like my own, is so high. I think most people in the UK can't buy the Dungeons and Dragons board games like um, Castle Ravenloft or anything like that on Amazon and get them cheap enough. There is a, you know, there's, there's this, uh, this benefit, you know, if you spend 35 uh, American dollars and you're in, in the United States, you get free shipping, right? Um, which is what usually kills you uh, in the long run with all of this. So I'm using this L Bear Brown for uh, his skirt. <laughs> this is just a basic color. I've got a final color for that. Um, I'm going to say that Ultimately, I think because you've got Games Workshop in your country, you're probably going to find that the majority of the stuff that you can afford to buy is going to be a an obscure board game um, with a lot of miniatures in it, or it's going to be something like a um, oh, Games Workshop miniatures. You're probably going to find it's going to be Games Workshop miniatures. Um, now where's where's the where's there's, there's a place there's a place um, it's not easy buy where you can buy a whole lot of sort of knockoff stuff it's it's not it's not eBay it's something else if I remember what it is I'll let you know so I'm going to suggest that um, even Games Workshop stuff in the UK is pretty expensive if I remember right. But some of the board games in the UK you might be able to get cheap 
if you, you'd have to keep your eyes out. So things like, not necessarily the Dungeons and Dragons board games, um, but something like um, Magic the Gathering. They had a lot of miniature boxes they put out with a lot of strange creatures in them, with a lot of miniatures in there that you might be able to get. Not necessarily going to be that cheap in the UK, but you could give it a go. Conan, uh, the Conan board game, um, the Descent board game, if it's on sale, if it's not on sale, you're wasting your time. All these things, are you're going to have to find them on sale. If you can't find them on sale, either in a store or online, you're wasting your time. They'll be too expensive. Because you're using, you're dealing with the pound, right? Uh, which is significantly more than something like American dollars or New Zealand dollars. New Zealand dollars are worth nothing. Uh, what else is there that you can you can pursue? There are a variety of other board games too that they've put out. Um, uh, what was it? Talisman? I think Talisman had a few. If you're trying to hunt down some of the older Dungeons and Dragons, like the Dun the D and D board game, the original one, didn't have particularly good miniatures in it, but it did have something. Now, what else was there? Um, who else is there? Oh, Blanco. Blanco or Caleb uh, has a dungeon um, dungeon uh, has a channel that deals with cheap miniatures, and and so he can point you in the direction for some of the stuff that you might want to kind of try and pick up if you if you're interested. That would be another thing. Um, oh, I wish I could remember the the knockoff company that puts out really cheap stuff. Um, and, and then I could just mention that because yeah my, my normal response of Dungeons and Dragons board games doesn't really work for UK um, there are some manufacturers in your country that do put out stuff that probably won't cost you quite as much mm. yeah I can't remember what it is I do apologize I'm, 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 I know that's not very helpful that's not enough information um, but right now, I'm at a blank. I did write some notes on a video that was supposed to be global, like where to buy stuff globally for really cheap miniatures, but I actually think I, I put most of that information into a video that's on Dungeon Class with Mark and Gonzo, like how where to buy cheap miniatures, and they asked me the question, and I just spilled my guts. Um, all over their video basically told them everything there was to know I think that's probably the best place to go and to check out because I think all the stuff that I can't remember is in that video if I could find that video I would link it to you maybe if I can do that maybe if I can find it I'm just waiting for that brown to dry and we're going to tackle the next green this is it this is the Feywild Emerald color so I'll give that a shake um where are you guys? I know you haven't done a video in a while, but show me, show me the money. Where are you? Where are you? Dungeon class, cheap, cheap miniatures. That is probably the best video that I've ever seen. I know Dungeon Craft um, had a video, but it, it's not global, so it's not really going to help you. He's uh, he's in one part of the world, and it's not, it just isn't going to work. Um. So scrolling down till I see one that has the little miniature that he's holding up. And do I see it? Man, we did it so long ago too. It was ages. Ages and ages and ages. Ah, there it is. There it is. Okay, where to find miniatures on the cheap. Found that video. All right, so I've got to make sure I don't play it or it's going to mess up with the everything else. And then grab the link. Copy. And then drop it in here. So there we go. That should give you everything you need to know. That link, that video that I've just linked now, should give you everything you need to know. Um, primarily because I'm, I spoke most of the time. <laughs> I did most of the talking. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah he, he, he's a humble guy. He's a humble guy. <laughs> What's this, Todd? I brought a 3D printer and am printing my own. Um, prices are fairly reasonable. I find that 
if you're going to use 3D printers, if you're in the US, it's fine. If you're in New Zealand, it just it's impossible. It's nowhere near cheap enough. Um, I don't know what the UK is like. Maybe the UK is a little bit better, but that technology, the resin and the filament plastics, they're just too expensive. So I just don't even bother going going there. Um, I, my brothers are doing a lot of that sort of thing. It's not a cheap exp um, um, process whatsoever. They've shown me, they've explained it to me. Um, yeah, works for some if you're depending on where you are, but it just doesn't work for me. Not if you want cheap. Okay, so uh, this Feywild Emerald is the next color that's going on. It is just going on willy nilly. I'm not really going to. I'm not dry brushing it or anything like that. It's just I'm just whacking it on. Uh, we're up to an hour now. Okay, and we're on to the second color for the main body, which is kind of a bit slow, but. Mm, I have been doing a lot of talking. That might might be part of the reason, right? I did actually put about three coats of that um, darker green on here, so that's that's probably part of the problem. Um, I'm going to put a lot of the paint on and then take the paint off. And because I've got the darker color underneath, um, now don't do not be put off um, Akira. Um, um, Kiri by the uh, the fact that hardly anybody watched that video. It is still one of the best videos out there on how to buy cheap miniatures no matter what country you are in. There are places where you can't solve the problem at all, but um, it's the best one that I've ever seen made. And I have to thank all those people from other countries who uh, explained to me in much detail and um, very angrily uh, that... Uh, previous videos that I'd made on the topic were inaccurate and that uh, it had no bearing on where they were in their part of the world and I'm like ah now that's a good point it really wasn't what my intention was to do a video that would cover everything but I maybe I should try giving that a go um, so yes although I, I didn't take down those videos or apologize so much for that I did at least make that video with um, Gonzo and Mark to help solve the problem uh, for those people who are really struggling to find them. <clears throat> I'm, 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 I'm sure it will be a huge help. Wait, look, right to the very end will probably be the stuff that applies to you the most. Okay? You, you'll find that a lot of the obscure stuff that people don't talk about are, is right near the end of the video. I tend to sort of cover all of the basic stuff um, at the very beginning, which stuff you've probably already heard, and then I go into the stuff you probably haven't heard later. Right, so this is um, starting to dry up, so it's actually it's actually going on maybe better now. Is it? Maybe. Right, let's just keep going. We're doing all right. Colorizing the little sod. And this scummy brush is doing its job, which is the main thing. Right, okay. Now, put that down. I'll put some more paint out. <clears throat> so, yeah, anybody who's struggling to find really cheap miniatures in bulk, um, you'll find that video definitely applies to you, no matter where you are. Um, I still am suspicious there are probably places around the world where you, there's no way of solving the problem. There's part of the reason why I started making miniatures on on live streams. But I'm probably not going to be able to do that any, anymore. That, uh, that used to be so stressful for me. I used to lose my mind. Uh, because I was never too sure if it would work. And I didn't really want to do a test run because that's like hugely um, time consuming. And uh, yeah... And the problem is, even if I can make it, there's no guarantee that somebody else can duplicate it. Somebody might be able to do a better job than me, of course. Um, that That's not un unlikely at all. Um, but yeah. I'm not really a huge fan of trying to make miniatures myself. <clears throat> Alright, so that is that question So I'm sorted out. Well, we've... we've uh, We've covered, we've covered a reasonable amount. Not too bad, I thought. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the face, which is very dark right now. It's going to be a lot lighter. 
Now, you might have wondered why I'm not thinning down the paint. What I've found with the Nolters um, paints, as I've said before, they've got so much median in it that they don't need to be thinned down. To thin them down would probably create more problems than it was worth um, doing in the first place. So don't get carried away and think that you should thin down the paints because they will just slide off the miniature rather than actually stick to your miniature. But you can put paint on and then brush the paint off if it's getting too thick. That's one of the things I have found with this stuff. Okay, that's pretty good on the body, the arms, I'm building it up, the colours. And we'll deal with some of the legs now, which is always nice. Uh, yeah, down the side. I'm going to have to shift to a smaller brush around there. I'm not going to be able to get away with just using this brush, I suspect. I will have to shift to something else. Here, yeah, mate, it's all right. <clears throat> now, um, for those of you who are kind of wondering what uh, the schedule kind of looks like in terms of releases from people um, and video content. There's been a lot of, can I just say that I don't really watch Critical Role. I don't have a problem with Critical Role. I don't have a problem with Matthew Mercer. But I am feeling that it's a bit cheap when people make videos on Critical Role talking about the last episode. And even a few YouTubers that I actually have met and know are doing this. Now I know it gets them lots of traffic and a lot of people watch them but it's just not their content and um, I guess commentary now on something that's popular is what drives views. Can I just say uh, that it is, it just isn't content for me, it just isn't your own thing. There's, it's fine to do a little bit of it, but some people have got programming like this that happens every week. And they've done it deliberately. And I'm sure it is making them much more money than it was before. And is more successful. Absolutely, I agree, it probably is. Is it any different to doing reviews on the latest Wizards of the Coast book? Probably not. No, I think it's probably in the same vein, if your channel is built only on that. Um, but I, I do feel like this this new focus is... What annoys me too is when people actually cut video clips out of uh, the Critical Role um, live streams or videos or, or gameplays and use it in their own videos. I'm like, seriously, are you really going to do that? <clears throat> In terms of a, uh, a business model, I mean, it makes sense to make money, I guess, but I, I, I do not like that new pattern that's been occurring. Um, I, w I, I wish they would actually just come up with something new, but they don't. Um, hey, Fred. Hi, um, Festoon. How's it going? Festaloon, Festaloon Greyhawk, how's it going? Um, just joined Looking Good. Yeah, it's coming along. I think it is. I think it's going to be a relatively terrifying miniature. I don't know that I can put this thing in front of my players again and then not lose their tree. I think that if I put down a Venom Troll in front of them again as a physical miniature, they are going to just pound it and supernova the thing and they're all going to run away and make sure they're not standing near it. I, I, I don't think there'll be any, oh, can we make a knowledge check about what we think this is? They'll probably guess pretty quickly as to what it is. Once I do a description, once I describe it, even if I don't say what it is called, they will have figured it out and they will just bomb it. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. Um... Q 
Kerry, what do you got here? Thank you for all the help. You're welcome. I will go and watch the video now. <laughs> oh dear. All right, I just lost somebody. They're off going to watch the video right this very second. That wasn't really my intention to get you to watch it right this very second. <laughs> you can hang around if you want. <laughs> oh God. Uh, <laughs> uh, you could watch it after my live stream. <laughs> Uh, it's too late now. They've already gone. They've already gone to watch the video. <laughs> oh dear. That's funny. <clears throat> um, Pale Rider. Hello, Pale Rider. I do watch Critical Role, but I give the, um, the cartoon based off at a cartoon based. But I'll give the cartoon based off it a shot. Ah, right. So you don't watch Critical Role. You do watch Critical Role, you don't watch Critical Role. I think the cartoon is going to be pretty cool. I'm, I'm actually quite excited by um, it being released because there's talk of there being a second season already. Um, Amazon seems to have already picked up that idea as like, no, you're doing one season, we want more, more than one season. So this is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely, we want more of that. And, and obviously, Critical Role should keep doing what they're doing because they're bringing new people into the game all the time. And that's a good thing, too. <clears throat> right, I got it, Pale Rider. Yeah, I just thought you, you don't watch it, but you will watch the um, Vox Mokra Legends. Um, makes sense. Absolutely, I got it. I figured it out. Okay, so how are we doing with this, this green? I am... Um, Looking at it, there are there are areas that, because I've gone with a dark green, it's kind of it's made some of it sort of darkish in some places. I am probably going to hit it again with the same colour. Um, although, actually, no, I want to do the tongue. I don't want to leave the tongue for too long. So we're going to hit this with the Cambian crimson in the in the mouth. Oh, pardon me. I got gas. It's not working. It's not working. It's. Sorry, I'm just listening to Amelia. Ah, it's not coming out. Why? Hang on. Let me shake it again and see if I can get this to work. There, there's a little bit of paint. Got it. Finally, it took a lot of effort, that did. Um, I don't need that much paint, but... Anyway. <laughs> oh, dear, funny. Right, so, tongue. Let's get the tongue done. This is just just for the tongue. I want the red just on the tongue. I might need to do it more than once, I suspect. Oh. Angle is the angle's fine on that, but it's just getting the paint in that small area. There. I think that's just about got it. There's, there's just that one side there. No, I'm going to leave it for now. Let it dry, and then I can always come back and touch it up if I need to. Otherwise, I'll, I'll balls it up, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so, uh, back to large painting areas. Uh, that's that brush. And then I've got this brush here, which was supposed to be doing... What was I, st what was I trying to do next? Oh, it's the green. I was putting more green on. Faye Wild. I'm just going to go over the big areas, probably with just a standard size brush. There we go. Not that much. It's just a touch up in areas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Here we go. So. Um, I have started reading through. The um, Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons book. And there's some really good stuff in there, by the way. There are some things, there, look, there are things in there that I was quite upset by. Things that they had skipped or didn't really spend that much time on. 
Um, I will obviously talk about those in a live stream and you will see an edited video as well on it. Um, I kind of feel like it's not necessarily the, the best book uh, for 2021 that sort of came out. Um, I, st I still feel probably the best book that came out that I purchased and really liked was the, um, the Game Master's um, book of Random Encounters. And uh, I've, been, I've been going through the, the Game Master's book of um, NPCs. Uh, it, it's got some good stuff in it, but I'm going to say right now there are some things in there that I think are problematic. Now, not problematic in the, in the way that you might be thinking, but problematic in the terms of being a tool that is useful to you. So, <clears throat> my discussions around that, I don't know when I'll do that. I, I, I thought, well, maybe I should do that first, but I probably won't. Um, I guess sometimes when I, I see a product and I have a response to it, and I'm not sure if I'm completely sure that that's my ultimate response, Sometimes I'm unsure of whether my response to a, a something I see is based on my own personal bias or on something that's legitimate. And if I leave it, I always find it easier to, to decide if something is um, all right or not all right. If I leave it with, and let it stew for a little bit and just let it ferment so that I can kind of like assess it uh, in, a, in a way that makes sense. I don't expect what I have to say to be what other people think. It doesn't have to be objective because there is no objective. When you're doing a review, there is no objective. Ultimately, there is some sort of discussion taking place that is based on opinion. And so those people who tend to share my opinion will probably tend to agree with what I have to say. That is always the case no matter where you look. It doesn't matter whether it's a written book review or a, um, a verbal um, video book review. It doesn't matter. It's always based on opinion. But, yeah, that book has sort of given me um, a few concerns. Uh, and and, and a, a little, I was actually really kind of disappointed too. Um, so I need to sort of let that stew and see if that's actually legitimate. Or was I expecting too much? Um, what do you got here, Greyhawk? Um, I, I've got nothing against tri Critical Role, but Dungeons & Dragons has never been a spectator sport yeah i don't really think dungeons and dragons is a spectator sport myself um i don't really think it is either i don't i just want more people to play i don't want them to watch i want them to play the game i don't want them to spend four hours watching critical role i want them to spend four hours playing the game that that's my that's my my aim so um if people can't play that often and that's the only way they can get their fix, then that's that's fine. But I'm always concerned that maybe people are watching but never actually going to the process of actually playing the game themselves. Um, every time we have someone uh, watching and uh, not playing, they they were a disruption to the game. Uh, Mercer is a great DM though. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, see, the, this this is this is one of the things I, I keep trying to sort of say to people. You know, people who want to see how I run the game, and I'm like, that's actually counterintuitive to what I try to do. My goal is not for to have you watch me or anybody else playing the game. I don't want you to do that. I just want you to play the game. So. Um, It's a really odd development. I find it so peculiar. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and a lot of people think, uh, I think a lot of people who like Critical Role think that that's, that I'm giving Critical Role a hard time, but that's not actually what I'm doing. It wouldn't matter if it was Critical Role. It doesn't matter. Look, even if you like watching Acquisitions Incorporated, I mean, is that taking you away from actually having the opportunity to play the game? Or you're just watching it because you didn't decide to get off your backside and find some people to play with. And it's just easier to watch somebody else playing. Not necessarily playing the game that you would play, or even the game that actually exists, because online games 
I find are sort of tailored for the market. Um, so yes, I, I very much feel that way about it. It's 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 about making sure people using their time in a in a manner which improves the game, and that means more people playing, not less. And if you watching Critical Role means you wind up playing more Dungeons and Dragons, great. Um, but if it's not, ugh, that's not that's not for me. But then again, that would go for anything, for anything. All right. So um, I said enough of that. That green is looking pretty good now. I'm going to wash out my brush. Um, Pale Rider, are uh, you asking me that question again? Here we go. Um, I won the book The Great Dale for Five E on uh, AJ's. Uh, channel way back i like it pretty good source book so i don't know if anybody's ever seen um or can make out the books in the background when aj's doing his live streams or his dungeon master round tables um aj has an enormous library of stuff i i can't tell you how much stuff he has when it comes to monster books incredible when he comes to Dungeon Master tools, amazing. And I think part of the reason why he has so much stuff is he does everything homebrew. Because he does everything homebrew, he has to have a lot of resources. Because he's he's got to make all of this stuff up himself. Because he makes everything up himself, he must have a fairly good working knowledge of story. One of his favorite books... Um, that he's shown me is a book that was given to him by his his parents, or I think it was his mum, on uh, mythical monsters and legends. AJ draws, um, when AJ picks a book and thinks it's good, it probably is extremely good, yeah. Okay, I'm pretty happy with uh, where we got to today in terms of uh, a product. Um in terms of effort i know it just looks like gray green and a bit of black and brown and that's about it and a little bit of red inside the mouth but i i, I there's no way i could have got that much done in an hour an hour and a half it takes time for the paint to dry and once that's dried i'll have a better idea of where everything is um and obviously there'll be a lot more detail work to do very shortly yeah i agree i i love how popular dungeons and dragons has become i'm so happy I have yet to experience the Matthew Mercer effect. So Jasper, you probably won't experience the um, Matthew Mercer effect. And the reason being is it's much more likely to occur if you're running a public game. So if you're running Dungeons and Dragons Adventurers League, or maybe you're even running um, the Pathfinder Society games for um, Pathfinder, Paizo's Pathfinder, uh, you're probably not going to experience that in a private game or in your own even to a large extent, you may not even experience that when you're picking up people online in a, in a platform that advertises games. I have experienced the Matthew Mercer effect, and really it is, it's just a discussion. It just As soon as you start explaining and talking to people about you know, what they want, what they expect, and you explain to them the reality of the situation, they usually, they usually understand. They're usually fine with it. <clears throat> I find adults, they can deal with it. Maybe kids might struggle, but I think even kids will, will figure it out. Do you know what I mean? And, and ultimately, there's nothing that uh, any live streaming service or even Matthew Mercer and uh, his friends who part of Critical Role, they cannot compete. They cannot compete with what kids do. Kids are totally on board for Dungeons and & Dragons and um, they will make the game something that you can just not imagine. <laughs> I can tell you that now. They're very, very good at it. They've had lots of practice. Okay, so I think, I'm glad everybody enjoyed the conversation. It's been really, really fun, actually. And I am looking forward to coming back and painting this tomorrow. Uh, we will be back the same time, same, yeah, same time. And uh, I, I will discuss more stuff about the troll or something else. I don't know. It might be something. Um, and we'll continue painting the Venom Troll. So thank you for hanging out with me. For those of you who have been spending your time with me. Um, I better end this poll. Where is the end of the poll here? Oh, I want, let's have a look at the figures too. I'm kind of interested by that. 
Um, yeah, here we go. So I have run the troll as a dungeon master. 45% of people here, cool. And we got 24 votes, which is good. Um, I have painted the, uh, painted the miniature, so you've painted some sort of troll. 25%. And then 20% have no experience, that's a shame. And I fought the troll only 8%. Mm, I feel like we need to get you guys playing some higher level games. Maybe that's the reason why people aren't coming across the troll. The troll is such a cool monster to have to deal with. To run it and to fight it. You need to do both for sure. So thank you for hanging out with me with this very long live stream. Thank you to my patrons. Um, if you are liking the stuff, I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters. And um, if you want to support the channel, you can through Patreon. The Amazon affiliate link's down in the description. All the paints I used today are down there. Um, unfortunately, you can't buy the Venom Troll on Amazon. I, I, I do apologize. Sorry. It apparently sold out really quick. Uh, you will also find a merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos. Or otherwise, the only other way to support me is just to watch my videos and don't run an ad blocker. By all means, skip the videos that allow you to skip. Do that. Do that for sure. Uh, do the usual YouTube things like uh, share, like, and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And I go live every week. Uh, and um, wherever you are in the world, whether it be the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family, and your friends. Be nice to your neighbors. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s. Oh, it's that sad time. The, the stream has got to end. And I did have a lot of fun.